We're sitting with my friend, Uber mixer extraordinaire, Mark Needham, the Killers, Fleetwood Mac, Chris Isaac. What am I leaving out, Mark? Uh, cake. Uh, Michelle Branch. Lots of them. Lots of them. Lots and lots. Um, tell me, how do you get most of your work? And we know that the industry is shrinking. The major labels certainly are, are kind of becoming smaller and signing less acts. How does a guy like you stay working? Uh, I mean, I have a lot of clients still from, you know, from in the label, in major labels that, that come to me. I mean, my name's out there on a lot of stuff, so people know who I am. But I also get a lot of stuff through my website as well. I mean, we get bands from all around the world. Um, we're, you know, we have the ability now to upload and download files over the internet and to stream the output of the console. So, we're, you know, we're able to work with people pretty much from Australia to across the U.S. and across, you know, Europe as well. So, so a band doesn't, they don't have to be on a major label to get to a guy like you? Not, not really. I mean, I, I, I work with a lot of bands that, that come independently to, to us through the website and you know, if it's something we really like, we work on that, try to give them a deal, as, you, know, you know, knowing that they're coming from an indie space and paying for it themselves. And if we can upstream it to a major, then we'll look for something on the back end or, or look for some kind of a fee if we're getting them signed, you know. How do most of those bands find you? What is your website? Uh, MarkNeenum.com. Well, see, I knew that. I was just pretending I didn't for the kids at home. Um, so uh, when a band finds your website, do they, they read your credits, and then is there a link or something where they can say, hey, get in touch with Mark right now? Right, there's a contact Mark Needham, and that, that gets you to, our, to Pauline, who's our web person, and she'll, she kind of filters through stuff and gets it to me, and you know, I listen to the bands and decide stuff we want to work on. Tell me a little bit about what it was like to go through the process you went through with the Killers, where you had an unknown band, you banded together with some of your friends in the music business and kind of created the project you created the record off of off of a band from Vegas. Can you well, it was you know it's a band that there was there was three of us who were working together at that time. Jeff Saltzman, Braden Merrick, and I were had a few different projects that we developed. It's you know we 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 decided to find some have our companies kind of get together and find some bands and develop them and you know from either from four or five songs up to an album and shop shop some of the stuff and. You know, The Killers was one that we had most of the album pretty much in the can before it was signed. You know, I mean, it was tough convincing people that that, that there were hits there, but I think, you know, once once it got out in the UK and, and it started to blow up, then, you know, it, it became pretty obvious that there was a lot of hits there. I mean, I mean, I mean those guys, you know, pretty much wrote their, wrote their own ticket. They're a great band, great, you know, great band, great songs. You can't lose, you know. So, was the do you think the UK thing was that all part of the strategy from the beginning, or did it happen organically that way, and the US caught up? To it? it happened organ. I mean, it's because no one in the US really wanted it, you know. Um, so, you know, I mean, we, we we took the option. I mean, you know, but Braden took the option that he that he had to get it get it out there, and it, that turned out to be the best way to do it, you know. I remember there's a, a an A and R guy at Maverick that. Wanted to sign the band. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, that's for another day. Do you have to hear a record first or rough mixes first before you agree to work on something, or do you kind of take anything that is sent to you and make it better? What's the approach for you? You know, you know, I like to listen to what I'm going to be working on first. You know, um, I mean, I, I cover a pretty wide range of stuff. I mean, I, I like a, a good song is a good song. I mean, I, you know, we do stuff that's pretty dance oriented. We do a lot of rock. We do pop. Uh, you know, I just. If, I, I, I like it, it. It's it's great if I like the music, you know. I mean, some of the web stuff we have to filter. Just you know, there's some songs that me putting a mix on it still is really not gonna. I, I don't know that it's really gonna help that much, you know. And if I if I don't really think that I can help people, I'm not gonna. I don't I don't really need to take their money, you know. I mean, I I, I want to find projects that we can really have, really add something to, you know. Tell me some of the records you're working on right now. Uh, the 88s on Island Def Jam, Inner Party System on Island Def Jam, Dead Day Sun, which is a band through the website in Australia, um, Republic Tigers, uh, through, through Upstream to Atlantic. Uh, what else are we doing, Will? <laughs> that would, I mean, that kind of... That's a good sign. Yeah, You're doing so much. We're doing a lot. Usually, we're, we usually have six or seven projects going on at once, you know. What would you say is the most common amateur mistake with bands that do their own mixes? On, on mixes or recordings? Both. Mixes, 
really not getting enough dynamics in, or you know, just kind of everything coming I down mean, the it pipeline. Depend, depend who you know who, who in the band's mixing the project. You know, if the guitar players mixing the guitars it, there's, are there's, loud. A, there's obvious problems there. You know, mm -hmm. um, there's a conflict of interest going on sometimes in those in, in those cases. But really, I mean, there's you know, there's a certain just punch and aggressiveness and things like that that somebody's been doing it for a long time. Getting the low end right, always a bitch, you know. Uh, you know, someone who's been doing it, who's done hundreds and hundreds of records, probably can get to it a lot faster and organize and sort through what files are going to work and what's not going to work. You know, um, Louis the Fourteenth on Atlantic. Or, I mean, J J Jason's a genius, but I mean, there's a lot of information there to sort through, and it, it, you know, I mean, he wanted me as a mixer to help kind of figure out, well, this is really going to work, this isn't going to work without having to spend, for him, investing the amount of time to really sit and listen and sort all this stuff out. I can do it a lot quicker just because that's, what, what, you I, do for that's what I do 12 hours a day for 30-something years, you know? 30-something years is a long time. Can you tell me or, or tell us, I guess, one or two uh, of your favorite maybe entertaining or, or funny stories about a record you worked on uh, and you don't have to give specifics necessarily if you don't want to but just something that that people would find very entertaining that they couldn't hear about on behind the music or or whatever because you were actually in it you were in the thick of it in the studio in the mix yeah, yeah that's that, that i usually don't go into to studio stories i'm sorry you know okay all right that's I, I just i don't i don't know because you know if i if i actually Say the story; it'll be pretty obvious who the band was. Might be, might you be. Know, and, might have to save I, yourself from uh, not getting that next gig. Yeah, sorry. Um, um, so, tell me a little bit about um, how much of your day is spent. Do you do you have a manager? Or? Actually, I'm going to tell you one funny story. Oh, okay. There's a band I'm, no one would know about any of it. Okay. Um, I had a band we were doing mixes for that kept coming back and 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 it's trying to explain to me that. They were comparing their stuff to the Beatles and some Led Zeppelin stuff, and all this. And they, they kept trying to explain to me how uh, that the, the, on those mixes they had all the bass in the left hand side and all the high and stuff on the right hand side. So I, I kept like, no, I, not, not. I mean, I've listened to these records a lot. So I finally went to their house and realized that their the tweeter was blown in their left hand speaker <laughs> and the woofer was blown in the right hand speaker. So they go home and compare, you know. And they go home and listen to all these mixes, and they come back and just couldn't understand why. No, no, all the bass is supposed to be in the... Anyhow. That, okay, so that was, that's, that's entertaining. That's yeah. funny. We're talking about the console. Obviously, you're working off of a, a, a digital design, and, and you've been on the SSLs for years, and you've been on a number of different boards. And when we first met, you were still working out of a, a traditional recording studio. Um, how has all of this technology changed the way you work, and, and do you like it better, and... Do you like the fact that you're not in a traditional studio space? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, you know, I mean, I've been doing it probably almost 35 years. So I spent, you know, many, many years analog and tape machines and traditional consoles way before automation, where we'd have to, you know, get, get to the verse, we'd make all the uh, get to the chorus, make all the fader adjustments, and then splice in for the next section. Um, I mean, I love Pro Tools. I love all the you know, the automation. The, the 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 fast recall is great. Just because I can have a lot of projects, like and you know, going at the same time, and I can also jump through an album really quickly, and just keep a consistency from song to song. You know, um, I, I, I mean, I'm, I, I love new technology. You know, I, I mean, we we try to keep a little bit of both. If I'm coming back, summing back to an analog board, and I have racks of analog gear in here that we're still running through. So, what do you say to people? You know, there's that old debate of analog versus digital, which I think we've gotten past in the past few years because it's just all digital now. But do, is it just is that argument kind of a moot point, or do you is there a difference? I mean, there's a big difference between analog tape and, but there's a big difference between you know between vinyl and listening on a CD or listening to an MP3. But since the world that we're living in is CDs and and, and not even really CDs that much anymore is. There's MP3s, MP4s. Uh, you know, I mean, you have to work in the environment that we're in. Um, I, I mean, I, I certainly don't. I mean, analog was fantastic and sounded great, and I did a lot of albums I was, you know, I'm really proud of. But I've done lots in, in this format that I'm really proud of. I mean, you know, it I mean, seems like the, the ease of, like you said, being able to jump from project to project or to do almost instantaneous recalls outweighs any of the subtlety or the you know the sonic it, it all starts with with a with a great song and a great performance 
I, I mean, you can record it <laughs> on your on your Walkman cassette recorder, and if it's a great tune, you know, it's going to be a great tune. People are going to love it. You know, I mean, I can do things to enhance stuff and make it better, but I mean, it all comes down to the great artist, the great song. You know, I, I mean, the rest of it is kind of is peripheral fluff, you know, which hey, so that's kind of what I do. But I, mean, I really can make things bigger. It can bring a lot to the table. But I mean, but you have to start with a great, a great song in the first place, you know. How has record making changed with all the technology? It seems like everything can be done faster, faster, faster. Is the quality of the music, is the quality of a lot of the records that you're seeing, especially from younger bands, suffering a bit from people not taking the time to do it right and, and spend the time with the songwriting and spend the time with co-writes and spend the time getting the right sounds? Or is that kind of, do you feel like, maybe this is a multi-part question, do you feel like the public is just bombarded with so much information that they don't know the difference anymore? Well, I think the public always knows a great tune. I mean, you know, I mean, there's a lot more information out there to sort through now, but, you know, a, a great tune comes along, everybody's listening to it, it's on the radio, it's, in, it's on TV, it's in ads, it's, everybody's listening to it, you know? Um, I mean, I, I, sometimes I think the, the focus on really great lyrics gets a little lost in arrangements of tunes, but I think that, you know, there's just a lot more people out there in bands these days, you know, so there's a lot more material to choose from. Some of it's great, some of it's not, you know. Uh, that is very true. You know? As we found with MySpace and, and all the social networking sites that support music, obviously when you have that much access to that many bands. But it's great people out there doing it, you know. I mean, you, you never know unless you try, you know. And, 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 you know, and maybe somebody doesn't sell six million records, but they still come out with a cool... I mean, I've done some really great albums that had really limited sales, you know, but... That I know are, that, that I'm really proud of, and I think are fantastic. You know, I mean, it, 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 I mean, it's great to see people out making music. You know, a couple of years ago, you and I had done some video footage for Current TV at South by Southwest. Right. Do you go to South by Southwest every year? How involved are you, and, and is that a great base for you to find? Is it about connecting with executives, or is it about finding new music, or is it about working with people you've already worked with? Or? I mean. A lot of the band. I mean, I go there to maybe support some band that I'm working. I'm already working with. I, I, I there, there, there is. I, you know, I see some interesting shows there every year. It's, it, it you know, I, I also just spend a lot of time network networking with people that you know. If if they did, I, I could do the same thing in L.A., but I have to drive all around town in rush hour, which takes a long time. I can go there and. And kind of just immerse myself in it for a few days, and you know, maybe you know, from the you know, get back with old contacts that I haven't seen. Every, everybody's there, so it's great, you know. You, uh, I remember when we were there, um, you pulled me into a show uh, by Igloo and Hartley, who I think you then ended up working with, or had you worked with them prior to the show? I can't remember. Uh, I was actually just developing a relationship with them. That's another band through the website that you know I've been. We're we're still in development on shopping. Trying to get a deal, you know. It's uh, just to, you know, to trying to come up with eight great tunes and get some sales, you know. Seems like what you're saying, you know, is that it's all about the songs, which is something I've said for a long time. But <laughs> oh. I think a lot of people they get they get confused and they want to you know tour and they want to do all the things to support their music when maybe they don't have great music to support. Well, you know, I just you know, you have to just go back. You have to really spend the time developing. I mean, you think you have a great. First, first, and chorus. Go back and look at every word that's written, and make sure. I mean, you only have you have three minutes, and it's maybe maybe you know a minute and a half of that is just, is a repeat of a chorus. Well, you know, you got to make every word really count, and every note really count. You, I mean, you're you're really trying to present your you, you know your you're trying to present yourself in three and a half minutes or three minutes and forty seconds. You know. You gotta. I mean, you really better choose every word and every note that's that's on there. You know, make sure that there's a valid reason for it to be there. You know, make every word count. That's the words of wisdom from Mark Needham, <laughs> mixer, multi-platinum mixer, producer extraordinaire, my best friend in the world, Mark Needham. Thanks, Mark. No what are we doing now?